Hello Internet. Wanted to do a video tonight to go over some information that really got me thinking <clears throat> um, about self-defense, things of that nature. I've always believed that each individual uh, should have their own ability <clears throat> to defend themselves and their property and their loved ones. And just some things I've seen in the news really drives home the point as far as why I think that way and why a lot of people think that way as well. So, just wanted to go over some tips and some information to kind of get you started. If you don't have anything that you use to defend yourself, um, if you look around, there's always going to be something you can use, like keys, or uh, maybe something inside of a briefcase, a pen, things like that. You can use those for self-defense. If it's all you have, it's certainly better than nothing. But we're going to look at some items that are geared towards self-defense, and that depending on your comfort level, your your background, um, and also your financial standing, these are all options that people can can pursue, um, either by starting out slower and working their way up, um, but it really depends, again, each person's different. So let's go ahead and look at a couple items um, so we can get this video started and really just kind of go from there. Um, the first two are ones that my my wife carries, are ones that I got for her, the other two are for myself. Um, but the first one here, as you can tell, it's clearly not for me. <laughs> um, but this is pepper spray. So uh, if you're going out on a walk, if you're um, pretty much if you're anywhere, especially if you're just exercising or wherever you might be, uh, even on a nature trail, um, obviously this isn't really made for bears or wildlife, it's made for people. But something very small, something very lightweight that you can carry with you, this is probably like 10 or $12, maybe less, it's been a while. But really all you do is just turn it on to engage it and then spray it. Um, I do recommend going through and not, obviously not testing it on yourself, but going out and testing it just to see how it performs so you'll be confident with it, just like anything else that you would, you would practice with. You know, practice makes perfect, so you want to go out there and uh, definitely try using it just to, again, uh, know how it functions and what to expect. The second thing is uh, a little bit more intimidating. Um, as somebody who shoots firearms, this thing is more terrifying than a gun to me. <laughs> um, but this is uh, a simple taser. It's made by ViperTech. Definitely not the highest uh, grade, but will certainly get the job done. And this one is actually rechargeable. You just plug it into a power outlet, and then you're, you're good to go to recharge the battery. All you have to do is basically turn it on, as you can see, it would just it would engage the light here, let you know it's active, and you just press it, um, just to get a pretty pretty good charge. Uh, again, I wouldn't recommend testing this on yourself either. You know, this really would make an interesting video, but uh, it's got a smaller setting here for a flashlight, which isn't very good. Uh, and then, of course, the red light means it's about to get pretty shocking. So. Um, I think I got that on the line for like maybe 10 or $15. So again, these options here, obviously different colors, it's what they do that's important. And pretty much anybody could get one or both of these. Uh, next we're moving up to some non-lethal options. Uh, a pocket knife, this particular model is the SOG Flash 2, spring assisted. So it just pops right open as soon as you need it, uh, it's there. Um, again, the knife is something that is also readily available. You can get knives anywhere from, you know, I, I wouldn't go below $30 for a knife. Maybe a, a Kershaw or a Buck knife that you would see in Walmart or anything like that. Those are definitely a good place to start, but the sky's the limit. Lots of different styles, lots of different functions, um, and they're legal in a lot of places. Blade length here is a, a pretty big, pretty big factor. Most places want you to have three inches or less but a lot of states are pretty pretty relaxed as well. It just depends where you live. Um, but a knife is something that pretty much is, since I was probably about, I want to say 14 or 15 years old, I've always carried a knife with me literally every every day. So a knife is good to have. It's multi-purpose. It's self-defense in this particular video, but it's something that has a lot of uses as far as opening up packages, um, and some of them can be multi-tools. So you'd have a knife or a screwdriver or other things like that in there as well. Um, the last thing that we're going to look at, which has been safety checked, uh, is going to be a handgun. 
Um, that's going to be a whole another video in of itself, depending on the requests uh, of other people who watch this video. But um, you know, handguns are definitely a lot more restricted as far as uh, legal legal matters and things like that. So again, the the handgun, obviously, lots of shapes and sizes. As many options are available for a knife, same can be said for a handgun, if not more, depending how large of a person you are as far as your frame and your stature. You can carry larger guns or smaller guns, depending on what state. Again, before you're doing any of that, you need to have a concealed weapons permit, concealed carry license, uh, whatever the terminology is in your state. Know the laws, know the limitations for what you can carry, and then go from there. Um, I mean, again, each each person's different as far as their background, their upbringing. Not everybody likes guns. Um, there are some people out there who, of course, don't want anybody to have a gun, which that's, again, <laughs> another topic. But this one here, this video isn't to say I'm right, you're wrong, you're right, I'm wrong, or anything like that. This video is just to let you know the dangers that are out there um, and what you can do to protect yourself. I know people who are not gun enthusiasts. They don't go to the range every weekend. They don't even go to the range very often but they still have a pistol at their house. And that's something that is good to think about, even if you're what you might call anti-gun. Uh, just think about it for a minute at the, at the fact that if somebody broke into your house, 911 is at the very best five to 10 minutes away. And there's a home invasion happening or somebody's breaking in, you know, you don't have minutes, you have seconds if you're lucky. Um, so having something that you can get to to defend yourself is, is definitely the best option. Alarm systems, you know, they'll scare somebody away, but if they're a hardened criminal, or if they're on some kind of drugs, or if they're drunk and they're not thinking properly, um, they're not really going to process the alarm and the, and the fact that it's going off. So, again, handguns are something that's great to have. Uh, a bat, that's one thing. A knife is one thing, but still, I wouldn't take a chance going after somebody that has a gun if I only have a knife. Um, you know, my life depended on it, of course I would, or the life of somebody that I cared for. But, um, you know, if you have the capability of arming up to the max, why wouldn't you? And again, depending on your state, you don't have to have a license or anything to have a gun. Um, again, some states are a lot more liberal and they want all kinds of craziness, everything registered, but at least where I'm at, you don't have to have any kind of permit or anything or any kind of training, you just have to have the legal age requirement and be free of any kind of felonies or anything like that. And you can obtain a firearm to defend yourself and your family. Um, again, even if you are, you don't want a gun, it costs too much. You don't really want a knife because, you know, it just doesn't seem right for whatever reason. <clears throat> so, I mean, the taser, that's one thing, but, you know, if it's raining or if the battery dies, you know, it may not be the best. Pepper spray, what if the wind's blowing, it gets in my eyes and I'm disabled for the fight. You know, any one of these you could look at and say, well, I don't want that because. And that's fine. But also take a minute to think, what do you have to protect yourself? If somebody popped out from behind a tree and had a knife and they said, hey, give me all your money or, you know, anything beyond that, that could be worse. Um, especially if they're just any kind of a sexual assault or anything like that, uh, and they have a knife and they're giving you these commands, I mean, you could run away and probably get caught. Um, you know, it really comes down to you, what you have at your disposal to, pr to protect yourself. Um, obviously, guns don't solve everything in the world, but they certainly do give you, if they, if they don't give you the higher ground, they will definitely give you, um, you know, level ground so that you can go ahead and take a look and, and kind of assess the situation. So again, not giving anybody any kind of legal advice here. I don't want to put you outside of your, your safety, uh, safety your, your boundaries basically. But just kind of think about the video. Um, if you have any questions, I'll probably do a part two to this. But uh, this is just something I want to put together based on some information, some things I've seen online. Um, some links will be in the description for this video just to kind of help you know, show you the realization of what we're talking about. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it and have a great night.